Okay, there comes times when out of pulpits people say the stupidest things. They say things that are not Bible correct. And there have to be things to correct what is wrong. And this has been on my heart for a while now. And reading my Bible today came even more to do it. It's going to be a lengthy uh, study. With, I, I don't know how long. And if my voice sounds weird or that, I, I apologize. Allergies, my, my nose and my ears. But we're going to look at, in the Bible, the angel of the Lord. Because I've heard out of a Sunday school, out of the pulpit, a man say that the angel of the Lord is not Jesus Christ. And then give his his college education and, and teaching and some, some seminary or something. I call them seminaries. But when we come to the angel of the Lord, which is in the Bible. All right, let's look at who he is. Is he Jesus Christ? Is he God? Or is he just any ordinary angel, but not Jesus Christ? Now, there are many, many angels in glory and in the Bible. 203 angel times in the Bible. 94 times angels show up, both in the Old and New Testament. Now, there are holy angels and there are unholy angels. The book of Revelation has more percentage of the verses and frequencies about angels. Then there is the angel of the Lord. 59 times in 58 verses. And that one verse that has it up twice is Judges 6.21. 49 verses in the Old Testament and 9 verses of the angel of the Lord in the New Testament. So it's there. There is the angel of the Lord. And by verse percentage, he shows up more in the book of Judges in Zechariah, which we're not going to look at Zechariah. I don't know how much we're going to get studied. Uh, he shows up in Matthew, Luke, and Acts. So, there are three key interpretations of that have been put forth for the particular identity of this angel of the Lord. He's a mighty angel who acts in a distinct representation of the Lord. He's God the Father assuming a human body. He's God the Son taking a body for a short period of time. Now, let's take scripture. I don't care what a seminary does. I don't care what a college says. I don't care what a man says. And you ought not care what I say. I am not above God. So the very first approach we're going to take, and the only approach we're going to take, is we're going to open a King James Bible. And we're going to see that even some King James Bibles have changed the Word of God, and you cannot get these references that we're going to study. Whether you change words or punctuation, you mess up the Bible. So we're going to take the first stepping stone as far as what I was reading today and studying that got me finally going to do this outline. If you would open your Bibles to Hosea. And I apologize, you know, if I go in speed. And it's great with the internet ministry that you can stop, pause, and continue. Hosea 12.3, because we've got much. And may God bless the time and give us the time that we can do that all needs to be done. And maybe a little extra. But... Hopefully this will be a good lesson for you. Maybe you've never heard this. I, I, wish, I was very shocked to hear this out of a pulpit that the man said that the, the angel of the Lord is not Jesus Christ. And, well, I've been taught with Scripture that he is. So let's look at the Scripture, shall we? Now, Hosea chapter 12, verse 3. He took his brother by the heel. Now, that would be Genesis 25, 26. That is Jacob taking the heel of Esau in the womb. And by his strength, he had power. That's an interesting word. Remember, power. Everybody's interested in superpowers, the power company. But let's vote power of God. Yay, he had power over the angel, not a angel, 
not over angel, the Pacific angel, and prevailed, got the victory. Jacob, he wept and made supplications unto him, and he found him in Bethel. There he spake to us. So, power of the angel. The angel in the realm of many angels. The angel. So Genesis 28, 12. Genesis 28, 12. We're going to look into a little bit of... He, Jacob is a man that's seen many angels in the Bible. And as many angels that he's seen, I would think that he would distinct between an angel and an angel. So Genesis 28, 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and its top of it reached to heaven, and behold, angels, plural, of God. So there are angels of God, and there are unholy angels of Satan, ascending and descending on it. So here, Jacob is falling asleep. He sees a dream, and here are angels going up and down. Multiple times. The angels of God. Again, yeah, unholy angels. The Lord stood... So there's God, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's God, Jehovah, the Old Testament. That's important. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's going to be another important key word of this study. He's the God, it says, the Lord stood above and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham. That's important. Thy father. And the God of Isaac. That's important. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in thee, in all thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's very important. Everything in these three verses, and then in uh, Hosea, are very important to us when we are going with Scripture, with Scripture. To find out, is the angel the Lord? Who is he? Let's leave it who he is. Let's leave with that question right now. So Genesis 35, 9. Genesis 35, 9. I get angry when people mess with the Bible and try to teach Christians who are trying to learn lies. Genesis 35, 9. And God, we need to know that. That's a key word. <laughs> Appeared unto Jacob. So Jacob has seen angels. He has seen the angel of the Lord. He has seen God. He has seen the Lord. I think we can take one thing with Jacob when it comes to angelic beings and seeing God. And God appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Padaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Okay? Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob. We have a name change. That's important. Name change and names are very important, as the other words I have stressed during this study. But Israel shall be thy name. Name. That's important. And he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful, multiply a nation, and a company of nations shall be of thee. There's that children. And king shall come of thy loins. And the land that I, which I gave to Abraham, Isaac, to thee will I give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up, that's important, from him in the place where he talked with him. Very important. When we're looking at these verses with the angel of the Lord, with God, all these verses are going to intermeal and sew themselves together. That when we finish this study, beyond a shadow of a doubt of a scholar's diploma and brainless wonders, we're going to see what the Word of God says. And what God says, you keep. What man says, throw in a garbage can. So, there we have. 
God appears to Jacob and renamed. Genesis 32. Genesis 32, 24. Genesis 32, 24. Now we're going to take ourselves back to Hosea, if you remember. If you need to, pause and go back to Hosea chapter 12 again. But we're going to take ourselves to Hosea, what we read, in Genesis 32, 24. And Jacob was left alone. All right. And there wrestled a man, wrestled a man, fighting a man is very important. <laughs> You're going to hear me say very important all the time. Because all these tie in together. There's nothing more that doesn't tie more than what this study we're doing. Wrestled a man. Guess what? That's important. With him unto the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, that's the man. Remember, Jacob had, had the power over the angel. This man is an angel, scripture with scripture, and Jacob prevailed and touched the hollow of the thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. This is the man, the angel, Hosea 12. Or, quote scripture, and he said, I will not let thee go, Jacob, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Name change. That's important. For as a prince thou hast power. With God, Hosea 12, 3 and 4. There is power, power, one working power in the blood of the Lamb. Wait a minute, okay. And with man, and has prevailed. That's exactly what Hosea 12, 4 said. And Jacob asked him, he said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. Hey, hey there it is again. And he said, wherefore is it that thou has asked after my name. Why did you ask him? That's important. Asking the person what their name is and names being involved. And he blessed them there. There's no answer from the, from the man, the angels. He doesn't give an answer. And Jacob called the name the place Penuel, for I have seen, that's important, seen God face to face. He's wrestling with a man. And he says, I've seen man, I've seen God face to face. And Hosea, scripture with scripture, says it's an angel. So 32 verses 24, he's wrestling with a man. He's renamed as chapter 35, verse 10. 35, 10, God said, God, God appeared unto him. Before God went up, he said, I'm going to change your name to Israel, and you're going to have seed. You're going to have a lot of children, and I'm going to give you a name, above name. I'm going to give you land. Hosea oh, so said, power over the angel prevailed. He asked for the man's name, and there was no answer. Penuel, I have seen God. Verse 32, 24, man. Hosea 12, 3 and 4, angel. That's important. So what's the conclusion? Angel, man, power, no answer to the name, seeing God. He has seen angels and he has seen God. So let's look at the first place the angel of the Lord shows up in the Bible. And it'd be quite interesting Genesis 16. I mean, listen, I love the Lord. I love the word of God. You can ask my family. You can ask my friends around me that love the Lord. You're not going to just throw something at me and expect me not to search the scriptures. And if I find it wrong, I'm going to bring it out. Okay? Study 
to show thyself approved unto God and working that needs not to be ashamed, rightly to bind the word of truth. The man that said that the angel of the Lord is not Jesus Christ needs to be ashamed. I'm not. Scripture with Scripture. Genesis 16 is when the angel of the Lord first shows up. Verse 6. And Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. That's Hagar. Do her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord, that is the first time, 16-7. The angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of shore. <laughs> That's interesting. Shore? A sure foundation? And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? Didn't God say something to some, uh, uh, Adam, where art thou? Didn't God say that? Okay. This is the angel Lord speaking, though. Hagar, Sarah's might, where comest thou? And where do thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress. Didn't Adam blame, blame the wife? It was her fault. It was the woman you get. She's blame. Well, she's got a good blame because it is Sarai's problem. But she's putting the blame to Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Isn't that what God told Jacob? Isn't that what the man told Jacob? You're going to have a lot of seed, and you're going to have land. Well, there's no land here, but a lot of seed. Isn't there a child here? Child, pregnancy, a boy is very important. You must get this. You must know this. It shall not be numbered for a multitude. This would be your modern day Arabians. And the angel of the Lord, 1611. This is chapter 16, verse 11, the first 1611 in your Bible. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, important, a pregnancy, or a coming pregnancy. Pay attention, be smart, read your Bible. And, sh and shall bear a son. That's important. Not a daughter, not a girl, a son. That's very important. And shall call his name Ishmael, a child that's been pre-named. Haven't we heard a name say, what's your name? Jacob. Well, no longer it's going to be Jacob. It's going to be Israel. What's your name? No answer. Name. You're going to name him. What's your name? Hagar. Hagar, you're going to have a son. You're going to name him Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard thy affliction. Jacob, uh, we'll get into that. And he has heard. He will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. He shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that spake unto her, Thou God. Thou God. It's been the angel of the Lord. Thou God. Hagar, you didn't go to seminary. You're wrong. Go back and be a slave. You're not great as we are. I'm not as a sinner over here. Yeah, wasn't that the Pharisee? Thou Lord, thou God, see is me. That's important too. See. See is an unimportant word in this study. They're all important. For she said, I have also here looked upon him, God, seeing God, that's important, that see is me. Okay, so we have Hagar, the maid of Sarai, wife of Abram, the mother of the modern day Arabians, Ishmael. The first shows up in Genesis 16, 7 with a woman named Hagar, drum roll please, at a well. At a well of water. 16, 7. Does that sound familiar? Jesus and the woman at the well, John chapter 4. He asked Hagar, what's happening? She's a runaway handmaid. He knows her name and he knows her occupation. Hey, Hagar, 
Sarah is made. He knows. That's another important thing about it. this angel knows things. He's got power and he knows. He knows her name and occupation. He has the power to know. After explaining her hardship, wasn't Jacob fleeing from the angry Esau? Was not Hagar fleeing from... Oh, 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 oh. You think that's coincidence? Oh, sure not. Sure not. 1610, he promises a seed as God had done to Jacob. Genesis 28, 35. Coincidence? Oh, sure not. 1611, pre-named birth as Jesus Christ was pre-named. Names and names. Coincidence? A oh, sure not. 1612, almost like a wrestling man. And then 1213, God seeth her, and she saw God. Conclusion. Angel, God, names, wrestling, kind of. One twist it. See, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, there's no wrestling in, in chapter 16, but the guy's a fighter. Pre-name and name change. Seen God and a well in Jesus. Genesis 18.1. Genesis 18.1. And the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, appeared unto him in the plains of memory. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. So the Lord appears unto Abram with two other men. There are three men. One speaks, 18.9. 18.9. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? He said, Behold, in the tent. A barren old woman. And he, and he said, yeah, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. For lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which she was behind him. Sarah is barren. She's unable to have a child. That's going to be important. Hagar was pregnant. Sarah's about to be pregnant. Pay attention to babies in the womb. By God, 1810. Only God can bring a male or female together to produce a child. I mean, you can have male and female relations all that you want. If God does not bless that womb, bless that seed, there will be no child. Now, 1813. Well, verse 12, and Sarah laughed. And 13, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? God knew that Sarah laughed. God knew Hagar. God knew her occupation. God knew she was going to have a son. God knew she was pregnant. God knew. That Sarah was unable to have a child, and God knew that Sarah had laughed. Even though she was not present with Abraham and the men. He's all-knowing, as he knew Hagar's name and occupation. Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. At the time of point, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Is that not Hagar? I mean, you got a 50-50 chance it's either girl or boy unless you're in America in 2019. But even still, there's only a male and female. There's no other. Boy, aren't you seeing these things roll together? How can you say anything else? All right, so verse 16 it says, and the men arose from thence and looked toward Solomon, and Abraham went with them to bring them on their way. In verse 22, and the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So one of those three men that showed up in chapter 18, the beginning of this chapter, is God Almighty. The two others are with them. Let's look at 19.1. And there came two angels to Sodom. So God and two angels have shown up to Abraham. 
Notice how his name keeps showing up. And the two angels take off, and God is left with Abram. In 1819, for I know him that he will command his children in his household. God all knowing knows what Abraham's going to do before he does it. As he knew about Sarah, as he knew about Hagar. God's all knowing. And God is speaking. Verse 20, and the Lord said, the two men leave. Now look at verse 25. And be far from thee to do after this man, to slay the righteous with the wicked. God ain't, Jesus Christ ain't going to do that. If you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's going to call you out by the rapture, dead or alive. And when he comes back at the second advent, he's going to gather those sheep and goats. He's not going to put them together. He's going to divide them. Get that. That the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge, capital J, that capital is important, that capital is important, capital J, of all the earth do right. Now, Jesus Christ is going to be the judge at the judgment seat of Christ. And he's going to be judge at the great white throne judgment. But we're speaking about God. And we're also speaking about Jesus. So, what do we have here? We have angels. We have angel. We have God. We have God is seen. He is there with Abraham having a meal under a tree. And he, God knows. We have a pregnancy issue. And we have judgment. Genesis 22.1. Genesis 22.1. Genesis 22.1 is the Old Testament Calvary. And in 22.1, God is speaking. It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said, that's God speaking, Abraham. He said, behold, here I am. Okay, we're not going to read the whole chapter. We, we, we don't have the time. It's the Old Testament Calvary of the Father and the Son. If you have not read chapter 22, you need to read chapter 22. Verse 11. Now, we're just going to concentrate ourselves from now on. No matter what the chapter, we're going to concentrate ourselves on the angel of the Lord. Verse 11, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, that's it. There we are. Called unto him out of heaven, out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am I. That's what God said in verse 1. So, here he is. He said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou any harm to him. So the angel of the Lord speaks to Abraham. God says, hey, take your son to this place and offer him for a sacrifice. The angel of the Lord comes down, speaks out, and says, hey, go no further. Go no further. So in verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah, Jara, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be, what's that word? Seen. Has that not been brought into court? Have we not God here? Have we not Jesus Christ? Or the angel of the Lord, as we further our study, we'll get to Jesus Christ. But there it is, seen. God, the angel of the Lord. We have Calvary, Genesis 22. So, a mount of the Lord be seen. Coincidence? It's sure not. 22.15. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. That's important. That's important. It said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That angel of the Lord said, he is the Lord. We can stop right there. Conclusion end. There he is. The angel of the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and multiply, multiply, there's a seed, there's a children, and multiply thy seed as a star of heaven, and as a sand of the, upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemies, 
Thy seed shall be in all the nations. Bless. I'm rushing. I shouldn't be. But there is the promise of the seeds, the great amount of children, and there's the land. Again, has that not shown up? It keeps showing up. Coincidence? I don't think so. The angel of the Lord again sounds the second time and says, Saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Obey my voice as you would to be obey God's voice. Conclusion, you got God. You got Calvary. Saith the Lord. And the blessings of Abraham. They all keep showing up. Genesis 31. Genesis 31. Genesis 31, verse 11. Genesis 31, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, that guy, he's here, he's back. He says, the angel of God spoke. Remember, this is the one that's seen all kinds of angels. Here am I. He said, look up now eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle, are ring streaked, speckled, and gristled, for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. All knowing again, he knows exactly how Laban has treated him. Has that not been showing up? I am the God of Bethel, which thou anointest the pillar, which thou vowed a vow unto me. Have you got it yet? Have you understood yet? That angel of God. Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Almighty is the same God. And he says, I am the God of Bethel where you first met me. Remember when you saw those, those angels going up and down and I spoke unto you? There I am. There's the angel of God that spoke unto him. Again, when he's coming, he's going to get ready to come out from Laban and go back home, go back to Bethel. That angel of God said, I am God. This is a man that knows about angels. He's watching them. God spoke to him. So let's leave Genesis and go to Exodus 3. Exodus 3. Exodus. That angel of the Lord says, I'm God. But God has spoken. In Exodus uh, Genesis 22, God spoke, then the angel of the Lord showed up, and he spoke. They're, they're not the same, but they're the same. <laughs> but they're not the same. Sound familiar like the Trinity? So, Exodus 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Now, we have... What is supposed to be an old favorite Sunday school story and teaching. Instead of vegetarians and pirates and other nonsense. Which I don't think this is probably taught in Sunday schools in your modern churches today. Probably other junk is taught. But this should be a familiar story of Moses and the burning bush. And it says again, the angel of the Lord, that's him. The angel of the Lord, here we are, there's our study, appeared unto him in a flame of fire. All right? The Bible records that when Moses sees that flame, we talk about the burning bush, the burning is the angel of the Lord. Now, do you dare me to go scripture with scripture right now? Or would you just rather me shut the book, put a cassette tape player, and do the boogie woogie and get my tootsie roll to all the students? As we shout kumbaya. Or shall we open the Bible? It says. Sorry, you get so angry. Because I'm angry when people pervert the Bible so they can pervert people. That angers me. Be angry, sin not. In a flame of fire. Shall we dare go to Hebrews? Shall we dare go to Hebrews? Hebrews. I'm going there. Hebrews 12, 29. Let's see what the Bible. By the way. By the way, what's the name of the book? Hebrews. What part of the Bible we deal with? Hebrews. So this would be a perfect match. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Not there yet. That's a flame of fire out of the bush. Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a consuming fire. How's that? Now I said that in the midst of the, of the bush. So everybody puts emphasis on the bush. Like they put emphasis on the trunk. But they take it off Jesus Christ. You got what I mean? Jelly bean? I know I stole that from somebody. It's not to be on the bush. It's to be on the fire. God, Jesus Christ. And a fire that it really doesn't really consume because there's always something, a residue. The flames of fire written by the holiness of God. That, hey, you don't want pay, you don't you don't want Jesus Christ to pay for your sins. The, the fire of God will have you pay for your sins. And it said, the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush. Let's get a little dark on it. The bush burned with fire, and yet the bush was not consumed. The bush wasn't the fire. It's God. The bush. There's a miracle. A fire that did not burn up a bush. Do you know somebody on this planet that did all kinds of miracles and wonders? That defied science, that defied the health care, that defied everything? Imagine somebody taking a, 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 an ear that had been chopped off and healing it? I, I, I don't know. Now, maybe that Hebrews 12, 29, I mean, that says our God's a consuming fire, and this said not consumed. The fire remained. And so did the bush. And when the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, saw that he turned aside to see God, uh, see God it said that fire in the bush was the angel of, of, of the Lord and the Holy Spirit said when he turned to see God see who? the angel of the Lord the fire, God, they're one in one he called him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses, Moses he said here am I isn't that what God said to Abram Abram, Abram didn't Abram say, here am I? These verses match. They sold together. He said, draw not nither, but put off thy shoes from thy feet. This is important. For the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Okay, that's important. Moses said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. There it is. The God of Isaac. There it is. The God of Jacob, there it is. And Moses hid his face, for he was af afraid to look upon God. Now, where would God be for Moses to look at him? That flame. And what was that flame? The Bible says, verse 2, that flame was the angel of the Lord. And the Bible says that flame, that Moses was afraid to look on God. God is the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord is God. No other conclusion can be drawn. So, Exodus 23.20. There is a, a, a slight line between this angel of the Lord and God. There is God, and then there's the angel of the Lord. But they're not one in one, but they're one in one. Is there not a slight line between God and the Son? And yet the Son is God and the God is Son, but there's, which Jehovah Witnesses have a problem with that. Exodus 23, 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. There's that land. Beware of him. Obey his voice. Has that not shown up? Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. 
Who in the Bible is able to pardon transgressions? Jesus Christ. Read Isaiah 53. God doesn't look upon us because of who he is. He doesn't look upon us by what Jesus Christ is. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It doesn't say God who took away the sin of the world. It says the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And that Lamb, that one is able to pardon, is that angel, capital A. Did I tell you pay, pay attention to capitals? We'll look at it in a moment. But if thou shalt indeed, uh, wait a minute, pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. Let me guess. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Again, there's that little fine line. There's God and there's that angel. God has separated himself from Israel saying, you guys are a bunch of sinners. You're stiff neck, but I'm still going to be there, but I'm going to be there in the angel. And that angel is going to carry my capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. How's that? But if thou shalt not obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. But my angel shall go before thee, bring thee into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites. Let me read 22 again. I may read that wrong. I'm not sure. But if thou shalt indeed obey my, his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies, an adversary unto thy adversaries. Now, verse 23, there's that land again. You can't separate that. There is babies. There is children. There is a land. There is Abraham. There is Isaac. And there is Jacob. Keeping your place there. As far as that capital A an angel. Look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Keep your place where you are in Exodus. Isaiah 9, 6. About Jesus Christ. 9, 6. Isaiah. Let's see Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Isn't that the recurring theme? Unto us a son is given. That's the virgin birth. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called capital W, Wonderful, capital C, Counselor, the mighty capital G, God, tell that to the Jehovah Witnesses, the everlasting capital F, Father, and the Prince, capital P, of Peace, capital P. And he gets the throne of David, chapter uh, verse 7. And then with Luke chapter 1, that's Jesus Christ. Look at the capital letters. There's no reason why that angel in back in Exodus 23, 20 should have the capital unless it's Jesus Christ or God. And the only other places those angels, sh that capital shows up, Jacob saying the, the angel that redeemed them, Genesis 48, 16. And in Exodus 23, 20 and 23, and then chapter 32, verse 34. Obey his voice like Abraham did. Jesus said, obey his words. There is power to redeem or pardon transgressions. That's Jesus. Enemy to those that will not obey. And anger is the second advent. The time when Jesus will separate the goats from the sheep. From the sheep from the goats. And that angel will bring them into the land. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? And man, time is just going by so quick. I may have to do a part two. All right. He said that angel, capital A, verse 20 and 23, for my angel shall go before thee to bring thee into the land of Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites. Did you get that? That angel, capital A, verse 20, it's going to bring them into the land of Amorites, Hittites, Parasites. Now, are you ready for a verse that is messed up in King James Bibles? That angel, read with me, please, before we go. Over. I'm not going to tell you where. Read with me. Ready? Verse 20. Read with me. Hold on. Read with me. Behold, I send 
and angel before thee. Verse 23. Read with me, please. For my angel shall go before thee. That's God's angel. We saw one place with Jacob, God, the angel of God. We've seen the angel of the Lord. Now you mess with this verse, you're not going to get this correct. You're going to lose Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And when you buy a King James Bible, check this verse out. Because it has been changed. Acts 7.45. My wife takes every Bible. She, we're going to buy King James. She opens up to this passage. And it has been changed. Acts 7.45. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus, not Joshua. Though Joshua brought a man, you say, why does it say Jesus? Exodus 23, 20. That capital A angel brought them in. And when you put Joshua, you have ruined, you will now say that angel of the Lord is not Jesus Christ. And I'm going to assume if you say that that angel is not Jesus, you've got a perverted Bible in Acts chapter 7, 45. Let's read the rest. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possessions of the Gentiles. Is that not what we read in Exodus 23? Next to, I'm, I'm going to put it right here too. Exodus. You put a note there. That's Exodus 23, 20. That is the cross reference. <clears throat> Instead of Joshua, it says Jesus, Exodus 23. Instead of Amorites, the Hittites, it says Gentiles in Acts 7. That's the cross reference. Now, one more place, Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, verse 8. Hebrews 4, 8. For if Jesus had given them rest... I know Joshua brought him to the land, but the angel brought him into that land. But what we're going to do is, we've got more. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to pause this right now. And we're going to do a part two. So let me pause everything. Let me save it up. And we'll go back into the study. We've got to stop. We've got 47 minutes and I don't want to go over on this and lose it because if this thing goes through a certain amount of time you lose a lot of information let's stop now and come back